Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be talking through all of the books that I read last month, so this is my June reading wrap up. As always, all of the books I mention are going to be linked in the description box below if you find them interesting. And I've got I've got quite a few good ones this video, so it's all good. I feel like my last um, my last wrap up was a bit like I hated everything, but we're good. We've got some good news today. Um, I will start off with some sort of average news, I guess, which is the first book I read, which is a book of short stories, An Account of the Decline of the Great Orc According to One Who Saw It by Jessie Greengrass. I read Jessie Greengrass's first novel, Sight, um, a couple of months ago, and I really enjoyed it, but I felt like her writing was quite episodic, um, so I thought, oh, well, her short stories are going to be really good then. And... I was a little bit disappointed by this collection, to be honest. I did really enjoy the tone that she managed to create throughout this collection. All of the stories are quite haunting. They seem to examine themes of sort of loneliness or loss or, or grief. Each of the characters are, are very, very isolated um, and each scenario is quite different um, and interesting and it's almost like imagined histories or imagined futures like there's a man who's a captain who's been deserted on, a, on an island. The title story I actually really enjoyed which is about someone talking about going to an island and killing all of these birds um, that just can't run away to the point of extinction but some of the other stories I just felt I don't know, I just didn't really get anything from them. Um, sometimes I couldn't quite understand what she was trying to imply, especially there's one story which is set in a, in a kind of future where all these weird disturbances are happening and I couldn't really quite understand that one. Um, and I think, I think basically I found it boring. But I did really enjoy Sight, which was written after this, so I feel like it's probably just that this collection isn't for me because I did really like her writing. And I, I sort of enjoyed her writing, but I just didn't enjoy the, the stories. Next I read some non-fiction that I very much enjoyed, and that was Lowborn by Kerry Hudson. Kerry Hudson is an author, but she grew up in extremely poor circumstances. She had a single mother who was alcoholic, they moved around constantly, she was taken into care at various points during her childhood, um, and they were extremely poor. She says at the beginning of the book that there are 10 markers to determine childhood trauma, and she scores eight of those. Um, so, what she's doing in this book is going back and re-examining her own childhood. So she went, she lived in various different places throughout the UK and she goes back and visits them. So this book is a, is a mix between an autobiography of exactly what happened in her life and what it was like growing up um, in those circumstances and then also going back to those places now as an adult. As a comment on class in the UK and what it's like to grow up in poverty and just how invisible it can be and how the, so the social services really didn't step in at so many points in her childhood they could have stepped in and they didn't. Um, that is very very interesting and I really liked her talking about her experiences especially after she got out of this environment and she talks about how she feels socialising in publishing and writing circles being not of the same class as everybody else and how these experiences have sort of rippled throughout her life and are still affecting her now and in adulthood. It's also so interesting to see how these cycles often repeat themselves and how she finds out that her grandmother um, was an alcoholic and was basically abusive to her mother and how it sort of trickles down through the whole family and um, it, it's sort of a look at this concept that if you work hard enough you can get out of poverty and she kind of really lays bare all of the different barriers to that and how difficult it is to get work that is meaningful and pays you enough and also how difficult it is to get past the psychological and emotional damage that is done to you um, either via parents or adults in your life but also by virtue of being in that social class. Um, so all of that I thought was brilliant. I think if I had one criticism of the book it's that at the sections where she was documenting her going back and visiting these places that she used to live in I felt like there wasn't much, nothing really came out of those chapters, like for me, I felt like she was trying to make stories out of being there, and um, and almost, like, I, I feel quite odd, like sometimes she'd be like, I went in this chip shop and this ugly fat woman was there, or something, like sometimes she'd talk about the people and I'd be like, oh, this is a bit, they might read this book, Carrie, <laughs> that's a bit rude. Um, I don't know, I, I felt like she was trying to make sense of something by being there, 
which maybe perhaps wasn't that necessary, if that makes sense. Like she thought she would have an epiphany by going back to Great Yarmouth and then maybe actually didn't. That is such a specific criticism of the, of the structure of the book though, and that isn't strictly necessary. That's just how I felt when I was reading it. Um, I think in terms of everything that she's saying, um, it's really interesting, really enlightening. Um, yeah, and I'd 100% hun recommend this, especially if you're interested in like, society that we have at the moment in the UK. Next I read English Animals by Laura Kay, which I really enjoyed. It wasn't quite what I was expecting, and I don't, I mean, what does that mean when you say that? But I had heard very, very good things about this book, um, so I think I went in with quite high expectations, and it was just very different to what I, what I thought it was going to be like. This is about a woman called Mirka who comes from um, Slovakia to the UK, um, and to, she thinks she's going to au pair for this couple um, in the countryside, but actually it turns out that they need, they need help with their taxidermy. And then as her time with this couple unfolds, it's about how her change, she has changing relationships with both the man and woman. Um, and it's like a really interesting examination of Englishness and English life, um, which is really, really clever. I think going into it, I expected it to perhaps be a little bit more meditative or philosophical, or maybe the language would be more poetic. Um, and it, I mean, it is really well written, but it's, it's very character driven and it's very, it's much more, if I say plot driven, that sounds like, oh, and then the house burnt down or something stupid like that. But I, it's more about their exact story. Um, which I really enjoyed because I think it makes it so easy to read and you get really into the characters so quickly. And then about halfway through the book, you're like suddenly, oh wow, she's made a really good point there. I love how she talks about the eccentricities of the English and the massive hypocrisies um, that we have as a culture. She does also take a look at um, the UK's relationship with Europe and European slash immigrants and also um, power dynamics, class dynamics. There's quite a lot in here. Um, but it's just a really good story and it's really interesting. So I would I would highly recommend this. Next I read a Persephone book, which I actually really liked, which is a massive turn up for the books. <laughs> for the Persephone books. Um, I, I do think it's a bit of a shame to judge any book by its publisher because, you know, they're all by different authors. Um, but I feel Persephone books in general are a little bit hit and miss. Um, but this one I really, really enjoyed, which is called Tory Heaven um, or Thunder on the Right by Marganita Lasky. And what I liked about this book, it's a, it's a parody um, about a conservative utopia. Um, and basically the concept is that the left always have this concept of their liberal utopia or a communist utopia or whatever it is. Um, and people write books about how society would work and these characters are like, well, there's, there's never been a, a conservative utopia. Um, why, why don't we have that? And that's what this is playing off of. Um, and it's, it does it in quite a funny way, actually. And what I really appreciated is that at the beginning of the book, there's a note about when it was written, um, which is it's set just after the end of the Second World War um, when Labour won the election. And essentially, after this event, the middle class in Britain were very, very upset because pre the war, they could afford holidays and ha could afford a car and everything was really nice and and now post-war all these working class people are living kind of the same sort of life as we are and we can't afford our nice things anymore and it was this kind of sensibility that Winston Churchill and the and the Tories played off of um and in order to win the election after Clement Attlee so this is um this is, is so current to how everybody's feeling in Britain at the moment, um, but it's just really interesting that I think we often look back on that period, um, in the UK at least, and think, oh, that was amazing, that's when we um, launched our National Health Service, everyone had just got through a war, everyone was, you know, all in it together, but but people weren't, like, people <laughs> People still had class divisions and people were still angry and out for themselves, as they always are throughout the whole of history. Um, so in this we have these... British people who were, who were left in an island in Malaysia during the war, um, so they've been out of out of England for a while, and then when they return, they discover that actually Labour didn't win the election, as they'd heard on the radio, and there'd been a Conservative uprising, and now everybody in the UK has been graded according to their class, there are A, Bs and Cs, um, Ds and Es, and um, you aren't allowed to associate with people outside of your class other than servants, um, and there's all these rules, and we follow this young man James, who is a public school man, and um, 
hasn't really enjoyed all of the class leveling that happened during the war and um, because he just feels you know I'm not very clever but that that shouldn't matter I my, I went to Eton I should be um you know a very important person and so at first he loves it because when he gets back to the UK he's of course an A and it's quite a funny quite a wry look at this concept because any kind of conservative utopia would inherently have class divisions and inequality um so yeah, it, I just, I really liked it. It's very short, very quick read. And finally talking about the right, we now have a book about the left and it's quite funny actually. I didn't realise how political my, my monthly reads had been. And that is Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism by Christian Godsey. And this is a collection of essays. I think the title of this is a little bit like clickbaity is a little bit misleading um, and a little bit silly but all of her essays are actually really really well researched and what she's looking at in here is actually what women's lives were like under state socialism in Eastern Europe and like the former USSR area and each chapter is about a different area in women's life like education, leadership, work, home and then she does talk about sex and relationships at the end. Um, and essentially she's sort of trying to have an adult conversation about, it's, it's quite US focused, um, about the fact that if anybody talks about socialism, people just go, oh, you're a Marxist, you're a communist, like communists were evil, blah, blah, blah. And she said it's made it very difficult to actually have the conversation about, yeah, obviously a totalitarian state is not great, but there were aspects of socialism which are good. And she's saying we shouldn't be throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. We should be looking at what is good about capitalism, what is good about socialism, like, and, and keep the good things. And this is so well researched as well. She really understands her area that she's talking about. And um, she's interviewed people all across different countries in Eastern Europe. And a particularly interesting group that she looks at across the essays um, are Germans, because you had East and West Germany, um, which makes it much easier to sort of compare what lives were like pre the Berlin Wall and post the Berlin Wall, because the East Germans and West Germans then obviously all mixed um, together. So. That was a very interesting area. Her main point across all of the essays is that under these socialist states, women were more economically equal to men um, because there was welfare um, provided by the state, such as the health service and education and childcare because they wanted the women to be working. Like, like that was the concept. And it meant that a lot of women's, classically women's, unpaid labour, such as childcare, um, was taken care of so that they didn't have to be dependent on a man or on a patriarchal society. And she often uses the kind of northern European states like in Scandinavia who have more um, liberal socialist policies and she's saying, well, they're not totalitarian states, like they're not the USSR, they don't censor the media or anything. Um, and that, you know, they do have capitalism operating as a country and yet they still have all of these welfare programs and women are more equal. Um, so. I really enjoyed it actually, it's really really clear and easy to read um, and it also didn't feel too light at the same time, that's a really fine balance I think to get in non-fiction. So yeah, I didn't have amazing high hopes for this book, I thought it sounded quite funny um, and I was interested to see what it was all about, but I think the title belies what is actually a very thoughtful collection of essays and a lot of interesting arguments being made. So that was my June. Um, I would love to hear from you if you have read any of these books um, as well and we can have a chat in the comments or if you would like to read any of these after hearing me talk about them and I will see you in my next video. Bye!